For most people, bowling is the perfect activity for a rainy day. You get to have some fun and wear some pretty cool shoes. Other people take it a lot more seriously. But if you've ever fancied turning professional, you may be surprised to learn you're not quite as good as you thought you were. Back in 1970, according to the American Bowling Congress, about 400 million non-professional league games were played. But out of those, only 854 got perfect scores. That's a score of 300. Compare that to last year, when the number of games had dropped to 170 million, and yet the number of perfect scores had risen to a whopping 42,000. So what's going on? Did we suddenly get a lot better at bowling? Or is it all down to new technology? Well, actually, no. It's all down to the way that the lanes are oiled. To help me explain, I'm joined here at Classic Bowling by Stephen Morris. Looking good, Stephen. Not so good. Now, Stephen is a physicist at the University of Toronto. Stephen, before we touch on the oil issue, can you explain to me the physics of bowling? What's actually happening as I throw this and try and hit the pins? Well, bowling is a subtle game because if you just drill the ball down the center, you get what's called a split. You just knock it right down through the middle. What you actually want to do is somehow is to control the track of the ball so it has a curve in it called a hook. You want the ball to make a slight curve right at the end and hit between the first and second pins at an angle of around six degrees. Why is that? What happens then if because, I do that? Because then you knock down both the head pin and all the pins cooperate and knock down all the pins and then you get a strike. Okay, so it sounds great in theory. In How theory. do I do it in practice? <laughs> well, in practice, you achieve this by giving the ball an initial spin, an right. outward spin. Like Let's that. have a go. So I twist my wrist. Oh, straight down the gutter. That <laughs> no, wasn't what you meant. Not how you do it. Here, let me try it. <laughs> okay. So this spin then is doing what exactly? Well, the way the ball moves is the following. You, you get it spinning around some axis, and the axis is, is sort of the line around which it's spinning. And then it hits the front part of the alley, and it's already traveling very fast compared to its spin. So the friction on the ball will actually increase the rate at which it's spinning. And then as it gets down to the farther end of the alley, you want that spin to have, a, have gotten to just the right uh, 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 direction so that it gets into the rolling phase where the, uh, where the ball is now rolling instead of slipping. And then it should start the hook and hit the sweet spot. Let's see it. Okay, here's Let's the Make it happen. Well, it's quite hard to see oh. if that did what it should have done. Right. Did, did, that, did that work, as you said? <laughs> well, it, it hooked, but it hooked into the, into the corner. Okay, so how important is the actual ball itself? Well, there's been a lot of work on engineering balls in order to give them better spin characteristics. Uh, uh, a uniform ball that's uniform all the way through will, will tend to like to spin around a single axis and stay there. Uh, nowadays, though, balls have f complicated looking pieces of plastic inside them uh, that allow them uh, the spin axis, the direction of the spin, to move around as the ball slides down. Okay. And all that is to, is to help the ball get into the right uh, spin to, uh, to get into the uh, uh, rolling regime and go into the hook. Okay? And another thing that strongly affects it, of course, is the friction between the ball and the and the uh, alley surface. Initially, the ball is slipping and it's spinning, it's being spun up, but as soon as it reaches uh, a certain speed, it begins rolling and then the friction increases and then the ball begins a, a steeper hook. Okay. And how does, is the, does the ball get affected by the way that the alley is oiled? I mean, this right. one here is oiled, I think, for us casual players. So, oh, so what does that mean? <laughs> How has that been oiled for me to achieve I've been oiled that spectacular to send it into the shot. gutter for you every time. Now, what the oil does is it decreases the friction between the ball and the alley. And if you have an oil pattern which is oily in the middle and dry at the outsides, then that's uh, nice for the casual player because if the ball deviates heads for the gutter, like you one just headed for the gutter, then the, then the friction between the ball and the dry boards at the edge will have a tendency to, to spin the ball up so that it actually makes a curve and and heads back down toward the center again. Maybe this one hasn't been oiled properly. Yes, I guess so. Give it, do you want to give it a try? <laughs> this is heavy! Oh my god! All right, All so right. let's right. move on quickly <laughs> and tell me about the way that the alley is oiled okay. for a professional. Okay, well the back part of the alley is always left dry because you want lots of friction there so that the spin of the ball can get that curve going. And it's how you oil the front part that's different between the, the sport bowlers and the casual bowlers. Okay. For casual bowling, they use a kind of a top hat arrangement where uh, there's basically a lot of oil over the whole center of the, of the alley and then it's dry at the sides. Okay. 
And this is considered to be kind of a cheat by professional or, or serious bowlers because it uh, favors, uh, favors getting them out of the gutter. Okay. So what they use is kind of a Christmas tree. They have a special machine, a very high-tech computerized machine that moves slowly down the alley and paints it with oil in a particular pattern. And the pattern of choice is called the Christmas tree. And it's basically a long uh, a tapering uh, pattern which ends about uh, two-thirds of the way down the alley. And then the last part is dry. And that's the one that's a bit tougher. All right. Let me try it again. Oh. Oh, another great shot, Stephen. Luckily for us, we're joined today by Frank Tika, who's a professional player. Now, Frank's going to show us how to do it on the sports Christmas tree lane. Right. This one's a lot less forgiving. He's got to get Pretty his good. Hook at the last part of the alley. He's not going to be assisted by the dry edges on the uh, on the duffer's uh, okay. oil. Now he's going to try it on the on the top hat or easier oiled alley. See the hook. Yeah. Excellent. Beautiful. Thank you very much, Frank. And thank you very much, Stephen. My I've been pleasure. talking to Stephen Morris, who's a physicist at the University of Toronto. What do you reckon? Time for another game? You're on. I think it's 5-0 to me at the moment. That's pins, not games. <laughs> <laughs>